Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cheapo Zone. Today in the hot seat, the oh, Neo yeah. Cheapo Pleasure. Let's take a look. The Neotech is uber popular on Amazon. Oh my God, this thing has thousands of positive reviews. So many, how could I let it go without giving it a good one look over? Well, fear not, today it is in the hot seat. I'm gonna see if it's as good as everybody claims it to be. Let's find out. Hey, these are crazy, crazy times indeed. Uh, my heart and prayers go out to all the people of the Ukraine. Please remember, you are not alone. Alrighty, as always, what do you get in the proverbial box? Well, first of all, you get a pretty decent little box. Full color going on here. Antikaser 83C. Uh, yeah, nice and white with a big, bold, contrasty photo of that multimeter. Now, it comes in two color choices. As you can see, I got the black. It also comes in that beautiful Keysight style orange. Hey, besides the box, you get a multimeter manual, and this is actually a pretty decent manual. Um, pretty small type font, though, I have to say, but really verbose and lots of info, specs, of course, but as well as some pretty decent little overall um, information here about the multimeter at hand. Good stuff. Nice Full style size test leads. Uh, nice, good overall feeling in the hand. Good grip, rubbery uh, at the top of that thumb protector over here. And plop off that protective cap. You lose a cat rating, but you get a little bit more uh, surface area to work with when you're probing that PCB. Um, overall, pretty decent test probes. And the shroud on the back, good size, nice and long. Uh, yeah. And when that test probe is in the meter, look at that. Wow, that baby is in there. Nice and snug. Like a multimeter bug in a rug. I gotta say, this sucker is not going anywhere. Beauty. Ah. Okay. Urgh. Finally, as an added bonus, Neotech decided to give us this pretty cool set of crocodile style test leads. So they're the clip type. Look at that, yeah, handy dandy for all sorts of bench style uh, testing. And even not on the bench, I mean, this comes in great. You know, we were testing something like a car battery terminal, whatever, just need to hook something in there nice, nice and tight. And yeah, awesome. And once again, a good style shroud on here, a little bit longer than the other shroud actually, um, but nice attention to detail here. I gotta say, getting two types of test leads, and these are pretty good quality. Um, for the price, it's hard Quality. to be. It's not bad. Uh, the plastic is fairly decent. Uh, not the greatest out there, perhaps, but certainly not uh, ultra cheap style plastic. It comes with a nice protective boot as well, which we'll take off shortly. Um, general though, fit, feel, and finish, it's it's not bad. Stand really as well comes out at a good 45 degree angle, nice and wide, so lots of room to maneuver. And you can definitely one hand this meter, no problemo, when you're on the bench. Now, spec-wise, this meter is definitely not going to turn any heads. 2,000 count display, I know. Boring! But, uh, you know, it is all done at a price point. It is auto-ranging, um, and you have nice, overall, clear-looking uh, selector switch, um, which I'll go over shortly. But, uh, I mean, generally speaking, uh, it's okay, it's okay. You're a multimeter junkie like me, and I sure hope you are. You know, when you see that moniker called Pro on a multimeter, uh, you take it with a grain of salt. Here, the NT8233D says Pro as well. So, is it going to live up to that Pro name? I don't know. Let's take a look at the selector switch starting off the 9 o'clock or off position. Volts DC up to 600 volts. Volts AC up to 600 volts. Resistance up to 20 mega ohm. Continuity and diode. Capacitance. Frequency up to 200 kilohertz. Microamps AC DC. Milliamps, ACDC. High current amps, up to 10 amps, followed by a secondary off. At the top of the meter, we have the one touch hold that doubles as a backlight. Beside it on the right is the function selector. Bottom of the meter, we have our high current input on the left. In the middle, we have our common or ground. Finally, on the right, we have our voltage, resistance, capacitance, frequency, and milliamp input. Start off with a basic DC precision voltage. Uh, 2.50 is what we want, and that's what we get. Let's try another one, shall we? Let's try 5.0 volts, 5.01. Alrighty, finally, let's try 10.0 volts, 10.03. Excellent. Electro switch is really good. Listen to that. Oh yeah. Hitting those ranges with authority. Nice clickety click, clackety clack. Beauty. I think though, that tilt stand is a little problematic. You really gotta get in there with your finger to pull that sucker out. Ah, yeesh. Anyway, 
let's take a look at the display, shall we? Um, 2,000 counts. Oh, it's a little ho-hum, isn't it? Yeah, you lose a lot of contrast depending on the angle. So you're not going to write to Grandma about this one. Uh, yeah, but um, let's try that backlight, shall we? And, oh, it's definitely better with the backlight. A lot more contrasty, although you still lose that viewing uh, display depending on the angle. But uh, when you're looking at it head-on, it is pretty crisp. We do have a little bit of bleeding over here on the left, um, but definitely it's it's not that noticeable. Overall, not a bad-looking display. Just, just wish it was more than 2,000 counts. Here we are in diode mode. Let's start off with a standard diode. Do we have an audible beep? I like that audible beep, especially if you're working on, let's say, a TV, have a ton of diodes on that main board to troubleshoot. Do you have to stare at your meter all the time? Well, you shouldn't. But unfortunately, with this Neotech, you will have to because we have no audible beep. Oh, gosh. Oh, well. Forward voltage drop was fine. Here we go. Over to the red LED. Forward voltage drop and barely lit. Oh, same with the yellow. It is barely lit. We have that forward voltage drop. And the green, once again, it is lit, but no forward voltage drop. Over to the blue, not a pinata. And the white, same thing. So, whoa, ho, three out of five in terms of lunation, two out of five in terms of that forward voltage drop. Not so good. Well, there you go. That's the reason why we have that dismal output performance in diode mode. A measly 2.2 volts. Ah, just not enough. Here's a side-by-side, -side, the Neotech right beside that Habo test, and whoa, that Habo's definitely a good 30% or so bigger, definitely chunkier. Um, if you're gonna throw one of these in the toolbox, that Neotech is definitely gonna take less space. So portability is something you might wanna think about when you're looking at the Neotech. Alrighty, sitting in the resistance mode, now we've seen some pretty crappy meters as of late in the resistance realm. Let's hope the Neotech is gonna do better. Sitting at one mega ohm right now, up to three mega ohm, six mega ohm, so it's not Speedy Gonzales per se, but it's definitely faster than some we've come across as of late. Let's try 2.2 mega ohm. 2.22. 2.222. Okay, so I'm going to give it about a C plus. Um, yeah, not bad. And in terms of resistance accuracy, 100 ohm. Mm, not bad. We have seen better as late as well, but uh, hey, it's definitely within spec. Only goes up to two a millifarad or 2,000 microfarad, so not really that high, uh, all things considered. See many cheapos now going over 100,000, uh, uh, sorry, 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. So, um, yeah, anyway, it is what it is. Already starting off with a 560 microfarad capacitor. Here we go. Oh, that is really slow. Oh, painfully slow. My God. Okay, well, we're finally there, but that was, you know, oh man. So that's probably why we have such a low capacitance range. Anyway, all right, let's try something smaller, shall we? 3.3 uh, microfarad coming up. Here we go. Wow, yeah, that is slow. And finally, 100 microfarad. Whew. So this meter takes a long time to get to any range on capacitance. Fail. Okay, continuity time. Let's put the meter into continuity. There you go. You can see we have our nice diode symbol. Diode, no. Hit it again. And there is continuity. Alrighty, Aphrodite. Let's get that out of there. Alright, continuity. Here we go. Standard stock default test probes. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. It's lashed, it's not very loud. It's okay, let's try the ProMasters. By the way, these ProMasters are over four years old now and they're used all the time. They are still uh, doing amazing. Gotta say, one of the best bangs in the multimeter industry, T ProMaster test probes. They're not cheap uh, by any means, but boy, do you get good quality from these guys. All right, here we go, three, two, one. Oh yeah, much better, much faster to latch, and a tiny bit louder. Oh yeah, Probe Masters come through again. Seventy-four point one decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Hey, that is pretty good. 
sitting here with a one kilohertz square wave and one kilohertz coming up no problem for the neotech it's pushing out around 40 millivolts and as you can see there we are coming up now with 42.8 millivolts so uh yeah no worries down there in the low voltage arena Sitting in high current amps right now at 6.2, according to the power supply, 6.4 coming up on the Neotech. Now let's see if we have a high current alarm. Let's just bring it up, shall we? 10.2 amps, and yes, we do. Good stuff, Neotech, high current alarm when we're over the 10 amp threshold. And bring it back down, 2.9 amps coming up as 3.0. So yeah, good stuff in the high current mode. So all in all thus far, not too shabby, really seems to perform well. Nothing funky or freaky going on, looking pretty good. Okay, let's take a quick look at the inside. Here we are taking it apart now. The Neotech is powered by one nine volt battery. Um, yeah, we have that kind of cheesy battery connector here. I'm not a big fan of those, but anyway, it's a cheapo. Nice brass threaded insert. So no matter how many times you open up that battery compartment, you're not gonna strip anything. Good stuff opposite side of the multimeter and we have no shielding uh no surprises is it okay let's take a look at the main pcb itself look at that we have two 5 by 20 ceramic fuses and by the way those are also rated at 250 volts a piece um below that we have the split variety um okay i mean the soldering job on this is actually pretty decent no weird flux going on uh yeah no, not bad not bad Actually, some pretty decent soldering, uh, good sized blobs of solder here, uh, looking good. Moving up a bit, we can tell we have some spark gap protection over here, and we don't have a current shunt. No current shunt, instead they've given us a current sensing resistor. So, uh, you know, you may or may not be a fan of those. I would always prefer to see a current shunt, uh, obviously, because they just tend to be more robust in the long run. No mobs. We do have one small PTC over here on the voltage side. Um, a diode clamp. And yeah, that is pretty well it. Moving up the board, of course, we have our speaker over here. This is a programmable header. Just move it a bit so you can see better. That's a programmable header for factory calibration. Main IC is cobbed. And that is it. That's all. Okay, take a quick look on the other side. Here's the rotary selector pads. One, two, three, four, five, count them. And yes, this multimeter has balls. Balls and springs. Good stuff. Over at the top, we have a couple of nice uh, rubberized soft touch buttons. And of course, there's the elastomer, or also known as the zebra strip for our LCD display. Here's the selector tracks themselves. Nice uh, wide spacing on here. That's always a bonus in the safety department. And uh, once again, you can see the soldering on here really nicely done for those uh, um, input jacks. Uh, oh, there you go. So clean, machine, looking good. Nothing else to report. Let's put it back together, come back I would and pass this one by. I think for the money, we're talking about 40 bucks Canadian, uh, around 33, 34 US dollars. You could probably get one of these, yeah, Habotest, which I would definitely suggest over this multimeter. Now, the pros and cons, you know, not many cons really. It did well in all the testing. I just overall find this multimeter kind of ho-hum. Uh, a ho-hum display, a ho-hum capacitance um, threshold. You know, it, just generally speaking, it, it's not something to get overly excited about. Once again, bang for buck, there's better out there and uh, there's nothing terribly wrong with it, but honestly, there's nothing terribly right with it either. Gets, unfortunately, 2.5 out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.